Hi, my name's Bill McKay. I'm a Senior Account Manager here at Blue Connections. Today with me, we've got Ryan Lee from Veeam Software. Hey, you Hey, mate. Um, Ryan's been assisting Victorian customers with Veeam evaluations for over three years. Today, Ryan, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about Veeam Backup for Office 365. To be fair, listeners, I should mention Ryan is very experienced with Veeam Backup for Office 365, having completed over 50 projects in this space. Now, Ryan, I don't think customers really understand the risks in not backing up Office 365. Can you explain why they should? Yeah, sure. Um, look, there's probably a couple of points to mention on that one, and then um, maybe a, a simple analogy. So the, the number one um, reason that you should be protecting it is something called the Microsoft Responsibility Model. Now, that's been a while around for a while. Um, it's written in their terms and conditions, and they specifically state that they recommend you put third-party backup in place. They don't take responsibility for the retention um, or existence of the data that you put in that platform. Their responsibility and their SLA is for the service uptime and to a certain degree, cybersecurity. So if, if the data is critical to you, then you need to make a consideration for what are the potential things that could go wrong, what are the likelihoods on that, and should you be putting third, third party data um, back up in place. The, um, the other element of it is that from a technology standpoint, even if you put in some of the advanced retention capabilities for Microsoft, they don't have a second redundant copy of that data. The only copies of the information there is replication and any changes flow on there. And that's a part of that service delivery. So there's only one instance of your information in 0365 cloud at any point in time. So that's another reason is that it's simply not backed up. Now, if you were to consider your Office 365 tenancy to be Humpty Dumpty is sitting on a wall. And under normal circumstances with minimal licensing in place for Microsoft, he falls off that wall. What's going to happen is some of his pieces are going to fall down into the gutter and then you get washed out into the ocean. And then, what, and then you have a disaster scenario with some level of permanent data loss. And in some cases, it could be him and his entirety. Now, if you put in some kind of protection, some kind of third party backup, maybe native um, policies of Microsoft uh, litigation hold for your emails, that's like putting a manhole cover on that um, gutter. So Humpty Dumpty still breaks um, and you've got all the pieces, but what you've done is prevented or minimized how much is getting washed out to sea. And this is where um, people start to, um, where things start to break down and where you need to be very careful about what third party backup you select, because you need to consider, and this is probably the difference between now and a couple of years back in, in terms of what's considered, many customers still don't think about how am I going to put Humpty back together again? Because we already know, um, and the examples from disasters we've seen is that it actually does take all the king's horses and all the king's men to do that. So the, the point, the main point of third party backup and what Veeam really focuses on is making it very quick, very yeah. easy for you to click a few buttons and have Humpty put himself back together and put himself back up on that wall. Um, and, and that's really what you're trying to do there. Excellent analogy. Um, there are a few Office 365 backup products out there. What makes Veeam different? Yeah, so the number one would probably be that um, you're in control. So Veeam is among the, a pack of vendors that is providing you with the software to build your own solution in a very flexible way to match um, the kind, you know, how you want to do things. So flexibility around how you back data up, limiting what you back up, um, how you restore it, granular at scale, and as well as where you deploy it, where you store it, cloud, non-cloud, um, as a service, not as a service, right? So it's control over your information is, is a key one. There's also the fact that when we talk about that putting Humpty back together scenario, Veeam is one of, if not the strongest from a technology standpoint at effectively putting things back together, both in terms of finding the information that you need to restore, as well as the flexibility in how granular or how expansive you need to restore, uh, or where you put that information. Are you restoring back to Office 365, or you you sending um, information out to someone as an email or somewhere on your network? Um, and so it's able to fulfill a very broad range of scenarios and use cases that may apply to different departments in your 
um, organization. Cool. Um, I should mention I'd... it is also the market leader. So if you were to go to Gartner um, and if you were to look at some of the statistics around um, growth of backup organizations and no 365 product, at the moment you will find that Veeam is at the top or near the top in most regions for those areas too. Awesome. Um, I, I guess vendor lock-in could be an issue with some SaaS products long term. Do you want to talk yeah. about that a little? Yeah, for sure. I think vendor lock-in is probably something you need to consider with SaaS no matter what. So it's not just a backup convo or a Veeam convo. It's it's a you're putting your data in someone else's hands and when it's as a, a service, there's a human element as well as a technology element that um, that creates a gap there and, and you're no longer in control of that. So you're really relying on someone else to be able to do restores or to be able to get access to your data. Um, so yeah, for sure, vendor locking is definitely a concern. Let's dive into exit strategies a bit more and explain how it can affect customers. Yeah. Um, the easiest way first, I suppose, is it, it, as to whether vendor locking is a problem and, and when working out your exit strategy, think about why you're putting this back up in place. Are you doing it for short term DR? Is this just you want six months worth of backup uh, for live data in case some disaster wipes it all out and you have to put it back there? Or are you also looking for an archival solution with them? Are you looking to keep seven years of email records for compliance reasons. Now, in that second scenario, whenever you have very large data sets, particularly um, stuff that is no longer in the production Office 365 environment, um, stuff that's from users and users that may not be a part of the organization anymore, and I'm finding this is probably the majority of the customers I work with, that's when you need to be concerned about the um, exit strategy. Um, and without really picking on any particular vendors or naming them, one of them, and you look at the terms and conditions, you have 30 days after um, not paying your last bill or 30 days after not renewing to move your data from their cloud, else they are liable legally to delete all of your information if they, so fi if they see fit. And what I've seen on forums um, across a number of vendors in this space is complaints around people who found in that circumstance that the technology and access to do that in that time frame, especially when you have terabytes of data and archives, is not adequate. So what you'll find is SaaS vendors will pull you into their platform at all costs with um, low cost licensing, um, unlimited cloud storage for a period of time, and, and if you look at the um, company owners and the, the strategies of the investment companies, you'll see that this is a specific strategy to absorb um, customer base, create economies of scale and lock customers into that service long term. And, and you don't want to be in that situation in the modern digital economy when you need to be agile and you may want to switch from 0365 or you may want to switch from that backup provider in the future. And so with Veeam and having that control, that's really what you're buying in that circumstance is not is, is it's a it's agility and freedom and control. I suppose the easy part about using Veeam too is you can bring that backup back down to one prem and store it off on on other other forms of media to keep it all safe for those times if if you were wanting to move from your clouds partner. Yeah, 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 for sure. You could do that as well. Um, how granular is Veeam backup for Office 365? Does it cover everything in Office 365? Yeah, so everything's kind of how long is a piece of string. And the reality is that um, the best of products um, don't do everything. The And this is because there's, there's a varying number of APIs that are required to develop products in this space. And most... Um, vendors have a limitation in some of that, but also some of the portions of 0365 simply don't have an API to access that data. So one of those, for example, is uh, video streams, which are a part of the Teams deployment, is not actually stored under your typical um, 0365 applications. It's stored somewhere else in the Microsoft environment. So um, the answer is yes for the, for the key applications, and the vast majority of data under them. SharePoint, Exchange, OneDrive, 
and through that Teams data and uh, OneNote data as well. We're actually very close to a GA if if the GA hasn't come out by the time um, uh, this this video is is being watched on a, a version five, which will have its own explorer to do restores of um, Teams. Now, in terms of granularity, that's a huge talking point for Veeam as well. You can go in and search very specifically for um, communications between two people via email at a point in time um, with a file name and go in and select a file out of that and then attach that to an email and send it off to a completely different person or restore it to a file so server somewhere on your network on-prem. So you can go in and pick out really specific things or groups of data. You can also restore specific sets of users and data to 0365 or this might be a complete disaster where you've accidentally wiped everything out with PowerShell or something um, or, or malicious actors, yeah, just restore the entire tenancy back to a, a particular point in time um, in, in the, the schedule of backup. So really, really, really flexible. Um, is Veeam Backup 365 a standalone product? Yeah, it, it is at the moment. Um, whether that stays that way it is um, uh, unknown at this point. Um, Veeam's strategy definitely is to move more towards consolidation of our products and licenses to make it a more cohesive environment. At the moment, it, it's installed using its own backup server. It's got its own um, JET database format, um, which has many advantages in terms of repository and it has its own license. So you can purchase this if you're not already a Veeam customer and it's going to have no issues doing that. Um, but the benefit if you are a Veeam customer is you mentioned before bringing um, stuff down on premise and then doing other things with it. What some customers that have very high requirements do is run this on the environment protected with their Veeam backup and replication, and they take an additional backup of this repository and then push that to a dedupe device or to tape or maybe up into an archive tier in, in um, Azure or AWS. And that way, not only have they got the, the Microsoft copy in production, but they also have two copies of backup and complete a 321 strategy. Most customers don't go that far. It becomes more important in that archive scenario where your production only reflects the last couple of years and then you have maybe 20 years worth of data down the line in this repository. You're going to want another way of having a copy of that and doing it really cheap and effective. So that's the benefit of using you know, Veeam as a whole kind of Veeam solution and ecosystem. Excellent. Um, there was a recent news article where KPMG lost approximately 145,000 Teams chat records. Yeah. They'd been using Veeam backup for Office 365. Would this have been backed up? Yeah, if they'd set the right, um, you know, the, if they configured it to do so, yes, um, you, you can protect chat messages using um, Veeam's backup for 365. So personal chat messages would be covered under our protection of exchange and chat channel messages under SharePoint. Um, so it just depends on how you configure it. Um, and yes, there would be a record there and you would be able to navigate through that and, and restore information. At this point, we wouldn't be able for chat messages to do a simplistic restore all of that back into the Teams environment. Um, that could potentially be in the product in the future. Um, but right now, the use case for specifically Teams chat messages would be one of retention and um, policy archival or if someone needed to get something specifically. But the, the, the KPMG example is just a perfect example because if you read the news about that, it was, I, I believe it was some PowerShell manipulations, but it was, it was administrative mistake. And it was a very, very minor mistake. And it's the perfect example of what I've seen in other use cases where um, the most common disaster I've seen is an administrative mistake. And it typically is a small thing that causes a very significant impact. Now, imagine if instead of chat messages, this was actual serious um, operational data or bespoke mm -hmm. um, information, and imagine how difficult the cleanup process, even if you had retention policies with Microsoft or um, some rudimentary third-party backup that was storing it somewhere, what is it gonna look like when you try to put back data into 0365 and put that back together 145,000 users. So yeah. that's a challenge even if you've got, you know, 30 terabytes and a couple of thousand users, right? So 
yeah, it's a it's a fantastic example of of the risk factors there. That that that's a beautiful segue into my last question. Um, can you give us a quick instance on where Veeam Backup for Office 365 has saved the day for one of the clients that you've been dealing with? Yeah. Um, I think I'd take one from an, another, another someone else, another someone else's customer, and one from one of my own as well. Um, a key one. So, to give some context, Veeam for a long time is when presenting on this has talked about the the average time it takes to find that something's been deleted in Office 365 is well beyond the typical 30 to 90 day window that it might be savable. Um, and, and the numbers thrown around are like 145 days or so. Now, I don't completely buy into that anymore because the product is so heavily used and then users are so enabled that you're probably going to notice if you delete something fairly quickly. Now, there was this instance where a construction company, a building developer, had this contract and it's stored in SharePoint and multiple people access the SharePoint. And they have a 20 year retention requirement. It's a multi million dollar um, contract. They cannot lose this. It's got pretty significant uh, legal and financial implications if they need that in a courtroom and they don't have it. That was deleted by someone who had access. And because it's not it's not accessed very often, right? It's a it's a static document, not a working document. It's high value and lots of people access it, but very infrequently. And so that's what leads to something not being noticed that it's gone for, for more than that 90 day period. But more importantly, it's of high value. So it's a really good example of how, um, how a very, very granular kind of mistake has significant cost to the business or risk. Now, having a third party backup in place with Veeam, they were able to just go back to the repository and pull that back because it's it's just archived in there. So it's just submitting the help desk ticket to IT. IT go and look for it. They know the name of the file or um, part of the name and they just go, go return it. Um, the second one is actually not to do a data loss at all. And this is something I've seen in education recently. It's a, very much a 2020 use case. With the work from home scenario, there have been a lot of hasty deployments of Microsoft Teams and migrations into Office 365. And this means that policy and preparation are typically lacking um, and, and you're opened up to more risks. And there are a lot of benefits to using um, Teams and chat communications. Um, but what this has led to is some rises in accusations around things like cyberbullying. And I had a customer come talking to me about um, the need to investigate. They've been asked by faculty to investigate a Teams group of students who were sending unsavory messages between each other. Between the time that we had that discussion and doing a demonstration with them two weeks later, they had another request from a different faculty to do with a different set of students exactly the same scenario. The, the benefit of, of Veeam that is not really realized, you know, it's not just backup, it's also archived, but one of the things that sets, it sets Veeam aside from the competitors in the space is that the search functionality is incredibly advanced with many um, criteria, and this prospective customer stated in the POC, so we use that use case as a live POC for the product, mm -hmm they were able to talk about how different their experience was trying to use the native Microsoft capabilities um, and the limited criteria for finding that info versus Veeam. Now, the other thing is we've spoken to some lawyers recently around that kind of um, school scenario and, you know, what data should you retain? And the very interesting thing that comes up is privacy. So it is also very important under some circumstances to only be able to see and restore data that is most relevant to a particular investigation. It's not good to have to be sifting through huge amounts of data, not just because it's a waste of your time, but also because you're potentially sifting through data that you really shouldn't be because there's no need. Um, so I found this new use case that's not related to backup at all that is coming up much more frequently amongst my government and education customers. Well, that was awesome, Ryan. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope we've helped um, your listeners and our listeners 
um, understand the importance of backup for Office 365 and how Veeam meets all your compliance requirements. If you're interested to find out more about Veeam backup for Office 365, please contact Blue Connections. We'd be happy to arrange a walkthrough in a little more depth. Thanks so much for your time today, Ryan. Let's hope more customers together address their Veeam backup for Office 365. And don't you be a Humpty Dumpty or have a <laughs> Humpty Dumpty and let him fall into the gutter and lose him. Talk to us and we'll get him back together for you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for watching. <laughs> See ya.